moving day isn't often national news, but when it means the reoccupation of number 10 Downing Street after big scale renovations, the whole country is interested. From nearby Admiralty House, where the Prime Minister lived during the rebuilding, the furniture came back to number 10. An unpretentious house to look at, it has nevertheless been the official home of our Prime Ministers since the first to hold that office, Sir Robert Walpole in 1735. William Pitt, the youngest ever Premier at 24. The Duke of Wellington in 1823. Disraeli alternated as Prime Minister with Gladstone. In more recent times, there was Lloyd George, the man who won the First World War. Stanley Baldwin tried to introduce a period of tranquility. Then came the first Labour government under the premiership of Ramsay MacDonald. Neville Chamberlain returned from Munich saying he had secured peace in our time. To the great Churchill, it was left to win the Second World War. Clement Attlee headed the Labour government when peace came. He is now in retirement. Back to office came Churchill. Before he retired, the Queen honoured him by being his guest at a dinner party. One of the great evenings at number 10. His ill-starred successor, Anthony Eden, broke down in health. He sailed into the sunshine to recuperate. An ironic fate to wait so many years for office to no purpose. And so today, Mr. Macmillan returns to number 10, his administration having survived the occasional setback. All agree that Harold is an excellent name for a prime minister. <laughs> <laughs>